Hey everybody, Hidden Object Guru here, joined by... Oh, the Gun Wrangler. There you go. I assumed you would want a clever name. Uh, but I wasn't going to choose it for you, so there you go. Uh, oh, my mop is too bloody, and I'm now leaving bloody uh, prints everywhere. How do I clean my mop? I have not there's played this since I here. originally got it. Oh, there's a bucket over there? Okay. Bucket. <laughs> Where? Oh my god, that is definitely a dead elf. So we are here for a very important... Uh, reason we are here to discuss a little thing called star trek discovery which uh i have been watching okay my yeah. attempt to get the bucket clean spread blood everywhere and uh, wow yeah that happened get us a new one <laughs> where do i get a new bucket from the bucket machine oh there's a bucket oh god machine. oh god whoa whoa that was some wonky physics occurred here okay is it clear how i operate the bucket machine Yes. How do I press buttons? Select hands. Oh, you can change your. I didn't know I could change to hands. That's my bad. All right. And then I pick up the bucket, and then I put the bucket down, and I try not to buck knock the bucket over in the future. All right. So yeah, we've been watching Star Trek Discovery. I've been watching it. He has been watching it. We have very different feelings about the show Star Trek Discovery. I am in favor of it. Uh, he, like many people, is not in favor of it. So. I thought this would be a good forum uh, while cleaning up Santa's bloody workshop after Santa has killed a hundred elves. Would be a perfect time to discuss. Oh my god, he killed some of them with shotguns. There are shotgun shells lying around. Yes, there's quite a few. Ew. There's lots of empty liquor bottles as well. Oh, Santa. I thought you were going to quit drinking. So, uh, the question becomes, wh what is your problem with... And I'm not going to... I don't want to like say like you're being attacked. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say you're wrong for disliking the show. I'm just curious. Oh, I, what... I'll totally say you're wrong. I, well, I assumed you would. That's just yes. not the game I play. It's the game everyone else plays. Uh, uh, so, yeah, you are you don't like Star Trek Discovery. What is what is the issue you have with it? I will, I will defend it later if I feel that you make some uh, roles. But mostly, I don't even just want to defend it. I'll just, I'll offer my opinion after you've had your say. So, go ahead. You like Star you hate Star Trek Discovery. Get going. Okay. First of all, the character of Michael Burnham yep. is a total disaster. It seems like it was two characters mashed forcibly together. Right. Because she comes off as totally schizophrenic. She's pretty crazy. Uh she goes, that being Yeah. She goes very quickly from Oh hey, I'm totally emotionless and vulcanoid to oh my god Klingons that's Kill true <laughs> <laughs> that being said I mean uh, she is human you know it's not like she's uh, she actually is a Vulcan you do understand that she's allowed to have more emotional reactions when she's a threat because let's face it her first experience with Klingons is a Klingon tries to kill her with a sword yes. and she has to kill it in response I mean, yeah, she accidentally kills it, but it's like, at this time, I think it's okay to be terrified of Klingons, because as they establish in the show, her, you walk through a lot of blood, don't you? Yes. <laughs> you really have to be careful about the blood, because you will get yeah, it. Yeah, it tracks everywhere. everywhere. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I see your point, but at the same time, so her only experience with Klingons, with the history of uh, Klingons, is they are berserker warriors who try to kill everyone they meet and the only way the Vulcans dealt with them as they established in the second episode is eventually they just started killing every Klingon, sh Klingon they found until the Klingons were willing to talk and then all they agreed to was let's just stay out of each other's space unfortunately like, that is her this goes against Klingons. This goes against most of established canon, if not all of it. Yeah, but, okay, I think this is going to be one of the, the first points of disagreement. Hey, we're doing pretty good in this room. Oh, Maybe we've got this corner this, done. Yeah, like, this one half of this room is looking okay. Oh, that bucket's starting to get red. So then I pick the bucket up, and then I do what with it? Throw it in the fire, like anyone would. Oh, I throw it in the fire, really? <laughs> That's what I'm doing with all the shotgun shells. Oh, I, I didn't know that. That's great. Haven't you learned anything? Fire salt. It doesn't seem to be so burning. many problems. It doesn't seem to burn it. Be burning the uh, bucket though. It takes a little bit. 
Oh. No, the bucket seems fine. Oh, wait, right. what if I put... Can I put the bucket back in the bucket machine? Yeah, you can get it refilled. Oh, that probably would have been a smarter choice. Anyway. Uh, okay, I'll press the button on the... Oh, no, a new bucket just came out. I'm so confused. Well, I'll learn as I go. Yep. Yeah, because I remember in the main game, there's like a disposal thing. So, yeah, I think one of the big things is I'm not super worried about uh, canon or continuity. Like, I'm not worried about where this fits in with the rest of the Star Trek. I'm... I'm on board for just a new Star Trek show that is not necessarily tied to the rest of Star Trek. Uh, I go by what uh, J. Michael Straczynski said, uh, which is, you know, like, you don't have to, you shouldn't worry about being trapped by what has come before in canon. When someone makes a new uh, show about, a new book about Robin Hood, a new movie about Robin Hood, they're like, how does, they're not like, how does this fit in with Robin Hood, Prince of... Thieves established continuity, and I yeah. see the val I see the value in continuity. I'm not crazy. I love Star Trek: The Original Series. I love Star Trek: The Next Generation. I especially love Deep Space Nine, the best yes. thing that's ever had the Star Trek name on it. But I don't think that's the I don't think that's the only thing you can do with Star Trek. Is stick. Oh my God! I'm throwing an elf's body into fire. That is that is not cool. What I just did. <laughs> hey. I know it's the He's game. He has to clean it up. <laughs> I know, right? Like, you didn't say but, how. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I don't. I don't know that there's. I like the weird part is I see the value in continuity, right? Like I see the point in it. I see the value in it. There are there are sticks of dynamite lying around. Do not throw I, them in the fire. I will endeavor to not, because I will die and have to respawn. I assume. Yes. All right, um, but at the same time, and. If you were asking me, would I prefer it if there was a show made in 2017 where every was everyone was on a like a original series accurate uh, starship, like and all of the consoles were just crystal buttons, and like the sick bay was that weird bed with the sensor on top of it? I would find that amazing. I would love it if they had made that. I think that would be great. But I am not letting my preferred idea of what the show could have been in any way affect my engagement with the show they made. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what I'm you're trying saying. to engage it just as its own drama. Unfortunately, that's not how Star Trek has traditionally been. No, consumed. you're right. That is true. Like up until well, no, up until the JJ Abrams movies, which threw out everything. They didn't throw out everything. I would highly disagree with that assessment. Well, they threw out all of the original aesthetic. They threw out, you know, the they changed the age of Captain Pike. They changed where uh, Kirk was born. Kirk doesn't have a brother anymore. Kirk like, was always born in Riverside, Iowa. Except in this movie, he's born in space. Yes. Don't you remember? Like, they changed yes. that. True. Yeah, like, they, they threw away huge amounts of continuity to the point... That it's weird that Spock is coming into a thing that has been so massively changed. The Enterprise is built on Earth, which is weird instead of in Space Dock, where I it know makes it like why would you build a spaceship on Earth? Like that's just <laughs> crazy. You have sp star, you have spaceship docks, you know, around Mars. That's what they're for. Why did you go to the trouble of building all of those if you're just going to build a spaceship on Earth? So I'm just saying, like, uh, wow, this is already filthy. No! I do you spill blood everywhere it. again? Yes, but I'm, I'm not dry. I didn't do any... Well, I did some minor footprints this time, but not a lot. I will, I'll I'll be more careful about spilling blood. You're right, the fire does consume everything. I was silly for doubting you on that one. Uh, <laughs> so it's like the J.J. Abrams... It does. Fire is the purifier. That's why it's called that. Uh, yeah. But yes, um, I... J.J. Abrams, he threw away everything already, and he pretended he didn't by having Spock there. You know, and everyone was willing to agree and pretend they didn't by having Spock there. But they did. They didn't do the original technology. They didn't do the original aesthetic. They sure as hell didn't do how people acted in the original Star Trek. It's like, they, it wasn't thematically Star Trek. It didn't feel like Star Trek. You know, I, like, I, I disagree. It felt like TOS. Oh, but no, it modified did not. enough. It did not feel like the original series. Like, it's not it about a bunch of guys in space 
you know, who are scientists and explorers doing their job. It is, to quote me, a movie about an asshole who gets a spaceship and tries to take revenge on Starfleet. And then a bunch of Star Wars crap happens. I think it was actually a really excellent reboot. I know I'm in the minority on this one. But the reason why is because the first Star Trek yeah. was meant to be an introduction for people who are not of the Trek. Right. And I'm fine with that, right? This is something that, you know, Star Trek kind of needed a shot in the arm. Okay. And it introduced a whole new audience to Trek. It totally did. Uh, but... And I totally get that. It did introduce, it brought in a new audience. That being said, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of the people who complained about the futuristic technology. I'm not one of the people, this time, by the way, I did not uh, intentionally spill the water. Well, I never did it intentionally. I was not trying to not, um, what do you call it? Uh, I was not trying to clean my brush and the water went everywhere as had happened every previous time. <laughs> this time, you know, much more reasonably, I want to say, I was uh, I was trying to get that, pick up that elf's corpse, and, uh, you know, one of the stools flew out of the way and hit it, so. That, that one was not so much me, just FYI. Yeah, so it's like, I didn't complain about them changing the aesthetic. I knew people wouldn't accept the original aesthetic in this day and age, and the tech. I'm fine with that. Hell, you know, I mean, uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, right? That wonderful game that I love so well, Star Trek Bridge yeah. Crew. Like, I love that it included a version of it where you can play with the original Star Enterprise Bridge. Right? That was a beautiful choice. But I don't expect almost anyone to play with that. Yeah. I like that it's there, but I understand in this day and age, you need the holographic displays. You need easy, readable stuff. You can't have people pushing a bunch of colored crystals and expect us to believe they know what's happening. Because, come on, that was that was always crazy. Yeah. So I don't mind the aesthetic changes. And for example, I I didn't like the Star Trek re reboot. I didn't like the Wrath of Khan reboot. Oh, I don't. I, that that it's, one was it's, bad. It's, it's garbage in every sh uh, way, shape, and form. I think that's fair to say. That yes. being said, I loved uh, Star Trek Beyond. I thought that was a really fun movie. Yeah, yeah me I, too. I enjoyed I'm, that one. I really enjoyed it. Uh, once again, uh, for three films in a row, it was about an asshole who gets a spaceship and tries to take revenge on the Federation. So I don't know why they thought every movie could only be about that, but that is what they made three films in a row about. Uh, but at the same time, it was a cooler idea for a spaceship than the first two. Like the giant hive spaceship is a good looking spaceship. Yeah, fair enough. You know, but I, I back it was to a nice the spaceship. matter at hand. Back um, to the matter of hand. So I'm just saying, like, I'm fine. With, I'm saying they already threw most everything out with the previous thing, with J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. And I'm saying once the deck has been cleared by J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, anything goes. Yeah, but this isn't... Discovery isn't set in Abrams' Star Trek. It's actually supposed to be set on Prime Timeline. Yeah, I know. And I think that a mis it was a mistake to say that. I think they should, should just should have said, we're doing our own thing. I think by getting into a... Con I think they did themselves a disservice by getting into a continuity conversation when it was obviously their intent to make a completely new Star Trek show and not have to worry about continuity. Like, if they were worried about continuity, they wouldn't have Twisted Beast. How am I so bad at taking buckets out of the thing? Like, I don't every know. time like, I take a bucket a out of the thing, of it explodes. Here? That came out last time I tried to get a bucket. It was very weird. Yeah, and it's like... Obviously, you're, you are right that it has created disappointment that they said it was prime uh, Kirk and Spock timeline and then they delivered this instead. Like, you were yeah. right that that has created disappointment and I would argue created confusion and they never should have done that. 100% I agree with that. That being said, I'm trying to engage the show with the show as an entirely new product and just taking it on its own as a piece of interesting sci-fi drama. And I gotta say, a TV show about a spaceship full of mad science doing war with Klingons, I think they're doing a good job. I think we like, have different took... inter... Maybe, yeah. I, I think you're short a word here. They're okay. doing war crimes with Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we haven't actually seen any war crimes yet. Are you Are you kidding me? What are the war crimes In... you've seen? Oh, b blowing up a corpse? 
booby trapping a corpse. It's a booby party trapping foul. a corpse. <laughs> That's true. That was pretty hardcore. Uh, that, but that then was... again, that being said, it was war crime against war crime. They were fighting a ship that could turn invisible, which I assume no, they're not, that's not war crime. against. Well, they, later on, it would be like um, later on in the world of Star Trek, there were all sorts of uh, legal agreements they came to about who could and couldn't build invisible ships. Yep. So, and that, this know. predates all of them. It does so. predate all of them. but Because uh, apparently this is how, you know, invisible ships were created. Yeah, because they only have one invisible ship at this point. They only yeah. have the, uh, the ancient uh, mausoleum ship. Which, yeah. by the way, I love the design of. I did enjoy the design. It's a good looking ship. Mm -hmm. This giant monster craft. Oh my god. Like that is that is a good bit of design on wh whoever came up with that one. Yeah. And you're right. There are war crimes going on. There are desperate people doing crazy things. And I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I have a problem. My primary issue is that the, basically you've taken the Federation. Yeah. We're supposed to be the good guys. And like it's a war crime in episode. It is not a war crime in episode. There has been a war crime in one episode. That okay. is an exaggeration. So we're going to ignore the attempts at biological warfare? They now haven't made any attempts at biological warfare. They found a monster. The, they, they found a monster and they're like, how can we re-engineer this monster's... Ew, God, a leg came out of the machine. Jesus. Uh, this is really disgusting, which is the point, I know. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, they, and they're like, are you going to turn to a biological weapon? No, we're just going to see, like, it's got super hard claws. We're going to see if we can turn its biology into armor for our ships. That's fine. They're not, they weren't planning to cross -bre breed a huge amount of those monsters and set them loose anywhere. Although I got to say, I will be entertained if it turns out that's why there's a Tribble. Like, if it turns out that the Tribbles at one point didn't breed like crazy, and then yep. a mad scientist genetically engineered them into a weapon designed to, like, decimate uh, you know, decimate all of the crops on planets, I think that would be an interesting twist. That would be an interesting twist. It'd still make the Federation war criminals. Oh, no, it absolutely would. 100%. Well, here's the thing. Like, it's very clearly alluding to the fact that, you know, the Discovery is a Section 31 ship. Which oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, they, they are. They they are a Section Thirty One ship. That is completely clear. This is going to be exploring Section Thirty One. Maybe how it was officially founded under that name. Like that is that is that was already discovered with. in Star Trek Enterprise. Oh, I forgot they covered that in Star Trek Enterprise. You're right. I, although I think a lot of people pretend Star Trek Enterprise didn't happen. <laughs> A lot of people are not fond with that. Although, you know, I will always, uh, I will always say I loved their explanation that they went to the trouble of explaining uh, the different kinds of Klingons. I really did enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. No. It it did have its moments, and by third season, it was hitting its stride. Oh yeah. No. It just it had a disastrous first couple of years. Yeah. It is really hard. I wish I could throw corpses because it's really hard to get stuff like these bodies far enough into the fire that they start to burn like you put a you just put an elf in there and it just yep. didn't work at all weird yeah no it's definitely a section 31 ship that's 100 percent and so i understand what you're saying that it doesn't it doesn't feel like the star trek we've come to know and love and 100 percent, i agree with you on that one it feels like it, a new thing a new thing that i'm enjoying like i'm just enjoying it as a show i'm enjoying the drama yeah, they still haven't found their feet on uh, Michael Burnham, the character. But Who's, at the same like, time, one of two characters that has any significant amount of airtime. Yeah, they need to They need to bring out Here's the... Here's a knife. Uh... Enjoy oh, thank a knife. You. Thank you so much. A butter knife. Without any blood on it, which is surprising. For oh, me. no, I cleaned that off. I had to oh. clean it off to get the corpse out. Jesus. <laughs> I did not want to know that, but thank you. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Um, they need to expand the roster, 100%. That being said, I really like Jason Isaacs. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, yeah, he's, doing, he's doing his doing best Sloan movie. impression. Yeah, I know, right? I, uh, I really feel sad for the guy who's like, um, you know, dime store Alan Tudyk. That they just didn't yes. get Alan Tudyk to play the inventor of the, uh, the, My uh, the, uh, the Myconium engine. Like, Which, you know, breaks canon, because there was oh, entire wars 
based on preventing that sort of thing from happening. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, you know what? This is a secret ship, and we could find out uh, that they ban it right after the events of this season. They don't ban it; like they're just gonna have to destroy it. So oh, it's gonna yeah. be too powerful to fall into the hands of the Klingons. It's... Yeah, and they're gonna have to destroy it and possibly use its destruction to blow up the uh, the the super Klingon, you know, uh, g the giant morgue ship. And obviously, the guy, the only guy who could rebuild this, is gonna get killed. Like we we know that's gonna happen. We've seen television. Sorry, Dimester Alec Tudyk. <laughs> why isn't it just Alan Tudyk? <laughs> like, why could could they not get Alan Tudyk for this? It's I would ridiculous. say that's likely. And also, why would Alan Tudyk want to be associated with this total critical disaster? <laughs> like, well, it's not like they knew that going in. I think we're going to see if they deepen the uh, bench a little once Shazad Latif finally joins the cast next episode or the episode after that. Uh, an actor who's most famous for being Clem Fandango on Toast of London. Mm -hmm. He's going to be on the show next week, so hopefully we'll see a bunch of him, because I love that guy. And, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, I'm enjoying the drama, I'm enjoying the battle, I'm enjoying the mad science. Like, there's this fun okay. stuff going on. And I'm really enjoying Doug Jones. Who dad? Uh, the, the, the freaky, uh, the, the, the cowardly alien. The, he's the yeah yeah i like him i think he's doing a good job you're he's right definitely they very cowardly him, yeah they haven't given him a lot to play yet but i think he's gonna like as long as they write him some stuff he is gonna grow into that part because he's a wonderful actor and he's already gotten a bunch of good lines he's already had a few good moments that i've really enjoyed yeah did this past episode finally have one moment that i'm like okay that was that was too stupid to be allowed to happen on television you mean like, oh, hey, uh, you know, it seems like just, a great idea. Why don't Taking I just attack this monster? With a knife. With a knife, no but, less. But worse than that, it's like, no, the, the, the part of that that was really offensive was the timeline. It's your job to weaponize this monster. Okay, I, have, uh, I walk away for two hours. You aren't weaponizing this monster fast enough. I'm just going to start stabbing it. What? Like, you gave her two hours. If that was a month later, maybe start stabbing the monster. But you gave her two hours. But, but, but why? Why? You've seen it tear through, like, decades. Walls. Why did you think a knife would be the... Well, she thought it was already going to be stunned. Uh, although she took no effort to confirm that it was stunned <laughs> yeah. before checking. And I'm like, yeah, no. That was the dumbest thing that's happened on the show by a wide margin and everyone who said that was inexcusably stupid is completely right that was inexcusably stupid i won't defend that moment i was angry at that moment i agree completely but i will say that there is stuff there's plenty of stuff that happens on the show that is morally questionable absolutely that doesn't necessarily fit how we associate the federation absolutely but i don't think there's been bad writing just about uh, characters in the situations making choices until that unbelievably stupid scene. Well, there's also plenty of bad writing with the characters. Because, <laughs> I mean, Michael Burnham is like a stone bitch to everyone she meets. She really is. <laughs> like, like, I don't know she, what she goes. She starts off cold. Her. Yeah. She starts off cold to people, then she's just like a raging bitch to them. Yeah, like she the starts kind of... cold and then she turns into a bitch. You're absolutely right. And I have yet to see what other characters saw in her that led to her promotion and led to her getting a good, like doing a good job, uh, you know, and getting promoted and maybe she deserved her own ship. Like, I have yet to see that. But again, I'm willing to give them a chance. I like because, like I said, I like the aesthetic. I like the actors. I'm on board for the mad science. I'm on board for a huge amount of this stuff. But you're right that they have to do something about the main character, 100. percent Although you know what I liked that they did about the main character, what? Uh, that in the first episode, their obvious plan was to be like, wow. The future is sh is so strange and alien that Michael is now a gender neutral name. And we're not going to comment on it. Episode three, no. Yeah, everyone knows it's weird. Like, <laughs> no. Everyone knows it's weird that she's named Michael. Yep. I thought that was really funny. But it, but that shows that they are willing to address. Uh, they are willing to address flaws and change stuff up as they go. Because that's clearly them discarding an idea they wanted to pursue and adjusting on the fly. 
Yeah, because of rabid fan hatred. Getting blood <laughs> everywhere. Well, no, but that's not even rabid fan... Oh, damn it. God damn it. That's not rabid fan hatred. They didn't shoot that scene in the week between those two coming out. That's them looking at the pilot and saying, yeah, this isn't working. Let's make a change. Let's make a change. Let's admit it's a weird name and move forward mm -hmm. from there. Because like, that, that scene was not like a new scene they shot that week. This isn't a soap opera. You can't just go back and fix stuff that quickly. Uh, so yeah, I'm just saying these are guys who are open. They are open open obviously to notes there oh god there was an elf impaled on some antlers jesus like they're open to notes they're willing to say this isn't working let's try something else so i mean i gotta say i'm willing based on what i've seen i'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt although i understand why other people have just you know dumped out of the show like i get it i'm that's not someone, there i'm enjoying did the enjoy um what you call it ds9 yeah I'm I, I'm willing to be very critical <laughs> of the show, but I'm, yeah. I'm still watching the entire season. Because, Good. There you let's go. face it, um, DS9... Had a rough first season. I, it, uh, one of the, the first season also had one of the best episodes in the entire series. Which one? Duet. Oh, God, was that just first season? Yeah, that was first season. Oh my god, I totally forgot that. Now I just rewatched DS9. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Oh, it's such a good show. I know. It's the best thing to ever have the Star Trek name on it. And I know there are fans who didn't like it, and there are idiots out there who prefer Enterprise. Yeah, but, both uh, those people are wrong. Yeah, I know, right? Just, like, this is no. something we can agree on. Oh no, 100%. And I think what we should do is, I think you're going to watch the whole season, correct? Yes. I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely going to watch the whole season. I think we should come back at the end of the season and have some final thoughts on where it went and what it is. Okay. Would you be I'd willing see, to do that? I'd be willing to do that. Part of the okay. issue is, though, um, it's... I don't know what it is. There's <laughs> just... Beyond the casting... The casting is really good. Yeah. I'll give it that. Because the person playing Dynamite. Michael Burnham. Yeah. Jesus! Why oh my god! Oh god, it's blowing up all the other dynamite! Get out of there! There's what? <laughs> there, was, what? there was dynamite all over the room, and it set <laughs> yes. off all the other dynamite. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with this Santa's workshop? Oh, right, Murderous Rampage. And now we have to clean all this up! Yeah, smooth. Oh. Screw you, game. Uh, but anyway, you were saying. Um, I do find that Michael Burnham is easily the worst character in Star Trek. Yeah, she's the worst. Well, not in Star Trek. In Star Trek. I think, no, I think you're forgetting uh, some, uh, I think you're forgetting, um, oh God, what was his name? I think you're forgetting Neelix. So far, she's consistently worse because there's more of her. <laughs> There's a lot. There's <laughs> that a... is not a. That is not fair. Neelix like, was the worst. You no, might be just... forgetting Kess. Okay, you might be forgetting half of the cast of Star Trek Voyager. Yeah, but here's the thing. In regards to Star Trek Voyager, yes, Neelix had like three minutes of airtime in a given episode. That's whereas... true. She's clearly the. She's clearly the lead, and she's not great. I agree. She's. But... Not great. You're being very generous. I'm being very kind. Yes, I yes. I will I will accept that 100. percent But I am interested to like I said I'm on board for the ride. I'll see where it goes and we will reassess at the end of the year to see who was right. Now I just wanted to point out that uh, here's uh, you know what the greatest example ever of um, people working on the fly to fix something. It what? happened in Deep Space Nine, and mm -hmm. that is this. So they uh, they'd had uh, Jeffrey Combs on playing a, uh, a space pervert who wanted a holographic sex program starring Major Kira, right? And, uh, and of course, uh, Quark tried to trick her into starring in that accidentally. So he was playing, again, the role he was born to play, a space pervert. It was, it was a great... It, and that was just the comedy storyline of that one episode, right? Yes. And so three episodes later... They need to invent this thing, a like a guy who runs the Jem'Hadar. They're like, hey, 
he was in unrecognizable makeup as the space pervert. Why don't we just bring Jeffrey Combs back? Uh, and they were like, uh, yeah, let's do that. And so he has that amazing episode where they have to team up with the Jem Hadar to take on the rogue Jem Hadar. Yeah. And and they introduce Jeffrey Combs. They introduce how they control them with the 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 white. Suddenly, I'm not the problem. This is great. <laughs> Finally, I'm not the problem. Uh, anyway, uh, it's it's an amazing episode. The end of it, Jeffrey Combs gets killed. And so then, when they uh, when the Cardassi uh, when the Cardassians take back the space station and they cut a deal with the uh, the the Delta uh, the I'm blank on the word. Sorry, the founders ran the. Dominion. Dominion, thank you. I just don't know why I couldn't come up with the word Dominion. Uh, they have this guy come on to be the the Vorta who's going to be their he- eyes in the area and managing the station. And so that guy's there for approximately one episode. And then I don't know if they didn't like the actor or I don't know if they're just like, we liked Jeffrey Combs way more. They're like, uh, how about they just clone Vortas all the time? Actually, do you remember that Iggy Pop also played a Vorta? Yes, and he was amazing. Yep. But I just love that they were like, because of the strength of Jeffrey Combs' performance in that one episode, they invented the whole idea of the cloning in the Dominion, which ended up becoming a major plot point for later in the ser- uh, for later in that se- uh, for really the rest of the show, all because they wanted Jeffrey Combs back playing Wei Yun again. Which, those are people who see what's gone wrong, uh, what has gone wrong, and try to fix it right away. And I really respect that. And I'm not, and it's obvious the same people aren't working on this show. I'm not saying that they're going to have the same instincts. But I'm Mm -hmm. saying the success of Deep Space Nine and the way it tried something vastly different from every other show makes gives me reason to think that maybe they could do the same thing here. I agree it has problems, 90% of which are its main character, but I see a lot of potential here. I like all the other actors. I like the Klingon makeup. I know a lot of people don't like the Klingon makeup. I like the Klingon makeup. I like the Mm -hmm. freaky monster alien Klingons. Okay, here's another point. You say they've tried to do something new. Yeah. They haven't. What what is it too much? DS, DS9 was already gritty and dark. So yeah. going back to gritty and dark is not new. That's true. Going um, going back to uh, uh, going back to 1966 wouldn't be new, but it would, at least it would be unexpected and different. I understand what you're saying, but it's not that it's just gritty and dark. I think the new things are set, focusing it entirely on the war, putting us on a Section 31 ship being about mad science. This is not stuff that Star Trek has really delved into before. It's always been uh, there on the outside. No, they've done episodes about it. They've done storylines about it. They've had characters who were in that world. But it hasn't been what the show was about before. Right? And, I mean, Star Trek Deep Space Nine was entirely about, you know, building a, up a after war. an occupation. And then it became about a war, exactly. But I'm saying it wasn't the entirety of what the show was about. Yes, I'm. You're. We're, we may be at a point where, at the end of this show, we're both going to say everything they did or tried to do, Deep Space Nine already did better. Like I, that's not something that couldn't happen. That could easily happen. But like I said, they have given me enough signs of positivity that I am definitely along for the ride. And hey, so are you. But that's uh, just because you're a diehard Star Trek person, not because you're loving the show. Yeah, I. I <laughs> see, it's like Trump. Okay. It's awful. How it's is this embarrassing? Like Trump? Oh but you God. still want them to succeed for because you want the nation to succeed or you want Star Trek <laughs> to succeed. Oh my God, that is so yeah. That is that is quite a reach you just made. I appreciate the reach, one hundred percent. I appreciate the reach, but no, I'm just gonna say full stop. I'm not gonna let you get away with that. Star Trek Discovery is not the Trump of Star Trek shows. Really? That's Voyager. Is it, but anyway. is it embarrassing and loud? Yes, it is. Jesus. <laughs> is it new to Star Trek and screwing everything up with this inexperience? I think so. Is it alienating <laughs> that... the traditional Star Trek base? Audience base. Audience base? That's yep. definitely a possibility. <laughs> but I got to say, 
I am blown away by the guy that got to play Sarek. I, yeah. I think he's doing a fantastic job of being Sarek. Like, he is. Yeah. He has yeah, got he's, that down. He he is a very good Sarek, but yeah, it doesn't make up for the fact that his Sarek <laughs> isn't Sarek because Sarek actually didn't speak to Spock for like fifty-five years after he joined Starfleet. Yep. <laughs> It Just wasn't to... 55 years, but it was a while. Uh, what, because this is um, Spock's foster sister, we're gonna, we may have the payoff that I have so always wanted. Which is? Which I have always wanted it to be revealed that Spock's first name was, like, Brian. <laughs> because in the episode where they talk about his name, he's like, it is unpronounceable by humans, and it is way too long. So, of course, I'll never tell you what my real name is. But he's got a human mother. I guarantee yeah. his real name is like Brian, and he's just so embarrassed by that he would never tell anyone. I, I, that has I been my head cannon for Spock since I first saw that episode thirty years ago. See, I would go. It wouldn't be Brian. Well, not It'd be Brian like necessarily. Aaron. Yeah. Or Guillermo. Yeah, just something. Well, we don't know anything about. Uh, we don't know anything about Amanda or where her family's from. But it'd be great if it was just some earth name and he's always been so super embarrassed by it he would never use it i've always loved that idea that is a good idea I yeah like i think that. it would be fantastic and it would be a great reveal to put in there oh god it's just such a good show all right so we're going to agree to disagree here but we will come back and we'll reassess when the season is over yes and I will be, I mean, obviously it's not going to be Deep Space Nine. Of course it's not going to be Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine was, was the best thing Star Trek has ever done. And, you know, it ended 20 years ago, and they haven't come anywhere near Deep Space Nine since. It gave us the best friendship in the history of fiction. Like yep. the, the most fully realized friendship I've ever seen in a piece of fiction. Uh, with our beloved Dr. Julian Bashir. And Miles O'Brien, who space literally, buddies. it was canon that Miles's wife bitched about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that's everything I mean, about that show just made me happy. And like, I'd love to see a follow up for it because it it'd be so easy to oh, make yeah. it so good and so relevant to modern times. Oh, yeah. Well, honestly, Deep Space Nine, I just rewatched it. It is super relevant to modern times. Yeah. Like, it's all about occupations. It's all about terrorism. There is an episode in that first season, no, second season, where a bunch of religious extremists blow up a school because the school is teaching evolution. Yeah. Like, that happens on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It is more relevant than ever. So yeah, 100% they should bring back Star Trek Deep Space Nine Not in even... some form or another. No, what they should do is um, do something set 10 years after the war. After? Well, okay. think about it. Or 20 years. Yeah, something like that. Everything is still fucked because... <laughs> yeah, well, everything was in a bad disturbed. state at the end of that war. Yeah, and 100%. like the losses in men and material has been so bad that you know starfleet stretched thin as it is just yeah. keeping the peace and there's still rogue jemadar running around because well yeah raiding parties because you know that's they have no masters anymore so what do they know to do except fight and raid for the stuff they need to survive well yeah they're not exactly going to be like you know what guys we should learn we a trade start a farm let's let's become farmers on this planet no that's that's I'm not gonna their become move. a welder <laughs> right I'm yeah. just in there going uh, yeah we could have the resurgence in a nationalist Cardassia yep Romulans being the big threat that'd be Klingons. fantastic Klingons as you know this not even this proud warrior race anymore because they suffered such catastrophic losses that you know yeah. Something like 45% of their population died in the Dominion War. Yeah, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And same thing with the Federation. They just... Oh, yeah. They were they were battered. Yeah. Oh, so, such a good show. Yeah, you I'd just... be interested to see that. I would watch the hell out of that. Like, to say, what are the consequences 20 years later, 30 years later? Of this total war. 
yeah, of this giant war. Like, how long does that stuff last? How long does it take to set things right? And what is the, you know, what is the hard work that has to go into that? I'd be down for that completely. And, you know, it's not like any of the actors aren't still around. All the <laughs> actors are still around. Every single one of them still around, still working. So it's entirely possible that they could do that. No excuse to Paramount. <laughs> Give us our Deep Space Nine sequel, god damn it. It was such easy fruit. Especially it really is, it's just hanging there. Because, like, think about, you could relate it back to the war in Iraq or Afghanistan, and, you know, oh, there's absolutely, guys, and there's how hard guys. it is to do the rebuilding afterwards. You know, there's, you know, Klingons and Starfleet on patrols getting ambushed on Cardassia, or whatever, oh. after, it's 30 after years all later. of these years, yeah. Yeah, that's still happening. And just seriously, even Garrick's still alive. I know. Oh, uh, God bless you, Garrick. Uh, first gay character in Star Trek? Right. I don't think he was strictly gay. He's, uh, what's it called? When you just want to pork everything. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Because I know it was supposed to be um, Neil McDonough in, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, first Contact, but they cut any revel reference to that. Because they chickened out at the last minute. He was supposed to be the first gay character in Star Trek. But, uh, and so I thought it was Garrick. But you're right. Garrick might just be up for whatever. <laughs> I miss Garrick. Everyone misses Garrick. He had some, like, the, some of the best dialogue. Oh, yeah. He was just one of the best characters they've ever done. Well, especially, he's so like, fantastic. He's like... Oh, I don't know anything. I'm just a tailor. <laughs> just a tailor. <laughs> oh, for years and years and years. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think we're, if there's one thing that everyone can agree on for the rest of time, it's that Deep Space Nine is the best uh, show just ever. Yep. It's and we'll see how many perfect. seasons it takes for this to become Voyager. <laughs> It's never going to become Voyager. I say right now, there is never going to be an episode of Star Trek Discovery where the plot of the episode is uh, one of the characters is sexually assaulted and then nobody believes her and then they and then the guy who sexually assaulted her gets killed and everyone blames her for his death. That was a real episode of Star Trek Vo uh, Voyager, by the way. That actually happened. I know. Voyager, I would say Voyager, strictly speaking worse than enterprise yeah no, 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 no there's there's no debate there although really? i gotta say the show is so completely disastrous that it led to my favorite thing that like nobody who works on the show talks about which is that it's the kind of show where literally there was an episode where every single character except for harry kim and a baby got killed and then new alternate dimension versions of those characters took over the show for the rest of the show and it didn't give anyone pause. None of the characters ever wondered about the fact that, you know, we're not technically going back to our earth except for Harry Kim and that baby. Sure. Like that didn't give them pause for a second. Like, wow. How do you, how do you write that? <laughs> you know, how do you write that? Oh, all right. So yeah, um, I guess our final response is we're going to take a wait and see. Uh, Deep Space Nine is perfect. Voyager is unbelievable crap. There are some high points in Enterprise, uh, but unexpected largely it is ones. also terrible. Very <laughs> unexpected ones, but it is still largely terrible. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that's that. I've been the Hidden Object Guru. Thanks for coming along on this journey with us. We hope we gave you something to think about in the neighborhood of Star Trek, or at least cleaning up after Santa's rampage. Either way, uh, we're going to be back here in two months once the show is over after Christmas to talk about uh, what the show ended up becoming and who ended up being right about it. It might not be me. I'm willing to, uh, I'm 100% admit that. And, uh, oh, look, it's the, the letter that Santa, uh, that drove him too far. Well, wow. uh, he got a letter from a kid who is a spoiled, rich asshole, and that's what made him go on a rampage. That's cute. Well, there's also a pile of bills over there in that, in yeah, that, that room you're that in. Yeah, that doesn't help. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that pushed him over the edge, is the point. So, yeah, uh, we will be back. Just, just go into the room.
doing this ridiculous dance thing. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I gotta say, I've uh, weirdly. I don't know why it took so long, so long to get into this viscera cleanup detail. This is a fun game. It this is. is. This is pretty solid. I kind of want. You know what? I was gonna. Um, I think we should play more of this for the next one. I happen to have an extra copy of the whole game that I was going to do as a contest, but I can just give it to you, and then we can uh, we can come back and play this when we want to chat. This sounds dope. <laughs> it does sound dope, doesn't it? Yes. So I'll send you that key. Um, do you want? Can you come up with a Star Trek quiz to give people so I can give away a, uh, a game key from my grab bag if they can correctly answer it? Yeah, sure. Um... Star Trek quiz question, and something that's not super easy to Google. Ooh. That's what I try to do. I know, right? Hmm. I, would it be DS9 specific? Hopefully, because DS9 is the best. Hmm. Do you want to just, uh... Do you want them to ask them to guess your favorite episode and then give them a clue about what it is? Ooh, yes, that'd be good. Yeah. Even though my favorite episode isn't, it's pretty obvious. I'll make, I'll find a okay. new favorite episode. It'll give me an excuse okay. to rewatch the show. Oh god, I'm okay. spilling, I'm spilling elf parts everywhere. I, I created oh, no. a lot of mess. Oh, did you put a bunch of elf parts in a bucket? Yes. Genius move. That never would have occurred to me. All right, so uh, do the quiz. Go for it. Hmm. Okay. What was the name of the? Uh, resistance group that in the first and second season of DS9 yeah um, was causing troubles for the Bajoran government that is a really good yeah. question yes all right because that's not that's not something that's right there on the tip of people's tongues all right uh, uh, fans only yep all right, so yes, uh, join us back here in a couple of months for a follow-up to this one where we discuss, you know, who was right and who was wrong. And uh, until then, you can find plenty of other content elsewhere in this playlist. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, why aren't you buying Battletech? Go out, buy <laughs> Battletech right now. The more people there are playing Battletech, the happier everyone will be. Yes, if we give Seriously. money to harebrained schemes, nothing bad can happen. <laughs> I like that idea. All right, so uh, another pitch. He has no financial involvement in Battletech. He just really loves Battletech. They've already they they've taken so much money from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've kickstarted okay. every single hairbring schemes thing. I, I'm just a super fanboy. That's so, uh, nice. Yeah. All right. Okay, so yeah, we'll see you back here for that. Uh, but until then, au revoir.